What's up everybody, Alex here, and welcome to the Dota Underlords Best Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you rank up in Dota Underlords. Now this week we're starting with these mages and spirits, and the core thing here is that we have seen a very significant change to Storm Spirit. In fact, kind of meta defining, and this happens every once in a while with the 3-star effects, Warlock was one, and now Storm Spirit's the other. And the reason why I say that is because Storm Spirit's new 3-star effect essentially makes it so that you want to 3-star Storm Spirit while going Spirits. Traditionally, you would actually lose a game by 3-starring Storm Spirit. You'd rather just have multiple Storm Spirits on the board so you can stack Delta Slams like crazy. But now, at 3 stars, whenever he casts Ball Lightning, he applies an attack speed debuff and additional 150 magic base damage to the target. In a Delta Slam, he applies that damage to everybody being hit by the Delta Slam. It's actually a huge buff to Spirits, especially if you're able to pull off a 3-star Storm Spirit. The result of that is a build that really takes advantage of that. Again, you're positioning yourself along the edge here, ideally with Eno if you can. Um, I do prefer all of attack Eno as because he can stun. But uh, the core thing is you have your six mages. It amplifies all your damage capabilities. You do run Ogre Magi before you can pull Lich, but you get the Lich in there as well. There's only a few mandatory items. I think that you want to get the Void Stone if you see it, and you want to grab this uh, Scythe of the Vise if you can as well. For people like Keeper and Maiden, uh, if you're not against uh, Pudge lineups, you can actually rotate the two like this. Um, Ember Spirit does require a Blink Dagger in this build in order to Delta Slam effectively. He needs to get that mana ramped up rather quickly. Um, if you don't have uh, a Tide Hunter or you're only at level 9, you can actually position the uh, the Earth Spirit in such a way where he can be the focus of damage so that he can do his initial cast, which uh, is a silencing effect, which is great. But if you get to 10, what I recommend you do is you actually get a Tide Hunter in there who does Ravage Magic based damage. And let's say the opposing team is lined up on this side here. What you're going to want to do is you want to position your guys in a way so that you bait the opposing team into the Tide Hunter so they can be Ravaged and then stunned and stunned and stunned and hit with Delta Slams. Uh, that's kind of what you want. Ideally, you want to get a Refresh Orb for Tide Hunter if you can. That should be something I've, I would have added there. Uh, and uh, other than that, you know, you get to 10, you add the Tide Hunter in, he helps to kind of crowd control, you get a stun from Tide, you get a stun from Eno, and then you get, uh, you know, silences and all these types of disables. Uh, the, the Chain Frost does work as well. Overall, an absolutely fantastic build, and one that has been re uh, rejuvenated thanks to the new 3-star effect from Storm Spirit. Druids are not getting the respect that I think they deserve in the current meta, and a lot of that comes from the fact that people are just not running them all that often. Yes, you'll see some Druid players here and there, but realistically, Druids offer such stability in the current meta thanks to the fact that almost all of them have 3-star effects. And I should mention, anytime you three, uh, see a 3-star unit in my builds, it's not that they're mandatory, it's just for, again a reminder that those units do have 3-star effects, okay? But let's just talk about these for a second. So in this build here, you are running, it's a 9 unit build, you can get the Maiden in there as a 10th if you can, activate humans and the uh, the uh, the cooldown reduction of the 3 star Maiden effect, but again, totally optional if you get the RNG early, but with the way spirits are going right now, Maiden's probably going to be super contested, so it's very unlikely you're able to pull that off, but if you do, it's a great add. Realistically though, what you want to do here is you run uh, you want to run four savages for the allied units being uh, the allied summon sorry getting the savage bonus. You want to get the savage uh, the sorry the summoner bonus of 40% additional damage. You want to run summoner in Essex if you can because she's going to kind of synergize the best with this. Actually, both versions of an Essex are ideal in this build, whether it be in Thrall or the um, or the uh, healing support. Now, what you want to do here is you're positioning yourself in a way that you can take advantage of the fact that you have Train Protectors, Leech Seed, healing all around here. You have the Magnus new three star effect with a reverse polarity. You have the absolutely broken unit in Lone Druid. Refresh Orb him, absolutely ridiculous. You want to get some mana generation on Nature's Prophet and uh, Venomancer if you can get them to three stars, because at that point they're just going to be summon machines. They're just going to be <laughs> churning out summons. If you find that they're both at three, uh, three stars and you do have the mana generation items, you might have to do something like this where you actually spread them out a little bit so that the uh, kids, uh, you know, actually more like this. Because what you're going to have, you have Venomancers put uh, his Plague Wards here, and then you have the Nature's Prophet will be bringing in the Trance from the back if he's at three stars. But overall, an absolutely fantastic build. I do love the Octarine on someone like uh, on someone like Shadow Shaman because of the reduction of the cooldown. You get multiple server wards, but that uh, can also Moonlight on someone like Bristleback. If you get Bristleback to three stars and you throw the Octarine on him, that's pretty... Uh, that's pretty greedy, but at the same time, it's pretty damn awesome. And of course, on someone like the Lycan, you can get a Moon Shard. But overall, an excellent build, one that I've been having a ton of success with, and one that I'm surprised I don't see as often uh, as I think I should. Now, it wouldn't be a Builds of the Week video if I didn't bring up the best alliance in the meta right now, and that is Trolls. And one of the other best alliances, Heartless. 
You put them together, what do you get? Great builds. So this is another build that uh, you know we've been talking about for some time here. But realistically, the way this works is you're taking advantage of the fact that you have the incredibly fast attack rates of the trolls. You give them items that capitalize that, uh, on that, like the Basher, the Silver's Edge. And then what you're doing is you're also adding in the Heartless effect, which is going to reduce the amount of armor the opposition has, which amplifies the amount of auto attack damage you're doing. And then you got yourself a match made in heaven with these, uh, with these units. This build is actually one off. One off from six heartless so if you want you can throw a lich in there if you get to 10 you could throw a uh, uh, shadow demon if you have them at 10 it's up to you the main reason why this build has become really interesting is because of this guy right here life stealer life stealer has been given a new three star effect uh, effective as of uh, the most recent patch uh, with an 18 second cooldown and some full mana he gains rage and any of you that play dota 2 know exactly what rage is he gains spell immunity uh, and he gets additional attack rate and movement speed. He becomes an absolute monster. Like literally one of the craziest DPS machines in the game. You give him a moon shard, he will take a team on by himself. He's absolutely insane. He might be one of the best single units in the game now at three stars. Absolutely ridiculous. He three stars. He uh, 1v1s a three star Luna. Easy. Easy. This guy's great. And uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use him, get him to three stars. But the thing, the nice thing about that is if you are targeting a life stealer at three stars, that allows you to level because you can target him at about level seven or eight. And, uh, you know, that's where the good rolls, uh, roll odds are for uh, tier three and four. You get some of the more valuable units like uh, Necrophos and chances at uh, Troll Warlord, who you would obviously put in for someone like the, uh, the Shadow Shaman. This is a ridiculous build, an absolutely ridiculous build. And the nice thing about it is while you're leveling up Life Stealer, you grab the Mask of Madness for him because it goes on the Troll Warlord later anyways, and you give him something like a Moon Shard. You can give him anything at that point, Satanic, whatever you want. He's an absolute monster. But guys, this build continues to pay dividends, continues to be one of the top builds in the, uh, the current meta because Trolls are just unbelievable. Believable. Look at this. We're talking about Brutes again. Brutes continue to be absolutely fantastic, and the six Warlock Brute variant continues to do work in the current meta. It is honestly borderline uncontested all the time. Some people now with the new Nyx, uh, sorry, the uh, the Life Stealer buff are now looking at moving towards Brutes a little bit, but Warlocks, no one's touching Warlocks, and this guy right here is an absolute wrecking machine, just like we talked about here. This build has a whole lot going for it. It's got Excellent healing, uh, a ton of debuffing with the brute bonus. They simply can't kill your line fast enough, and uh, you just continue to heal with the warlocks. Um, and the only tricky thing is, is the itemization is a bit tricky because if you have a two-star uh, life stealer and you're running a mask of madness, you get him to three stars. You can't run the mask anymore. I mean, you could. He's still good with it. Don't get me wrong. But realistically, you really want that rage effect. You want to get something like a moon shard on him. And this mask of madness becomes dead weight. And the reason for that is because you have no unit here that you really want to put it on. You can make an argument for a few of them, but you don't want to put it on any of the Warlocks because that heal that they that they activate when they cast a spell is way too damn valuable. You could put it on Doom, maybe, if you don't have a good item like a Butterfly or something like that. Uh, you could put it on Doom. Actually, Butterfly, another great item for uh, Three Star Life Stealer. You miss the Doom effect. It becomes an absolute uh, DPS maniac, so that's pretty cool. Maybe Doom if, you, uh, if, you, if you're feeling up to it. But realistically, the Mask of Madness might be something you end up just throwing on the sidelines there. Again, Doom, probably your best option. But overall, guys, this build continues to be great. It only gets better with the three-star effect of Life Stealer. And again, because this is a build that focuses on six Warlock, four Brutes, it is a, a level-heavy build, which allows you to get to the sweet spots rather quickly for the, th uh, the Tier 3 units. You get the uh, the Dooms early. And of course, you're using the uh, the Druids early on to kind of uh, facilitate your early game and uh, the, you know the Brutes themselves, Ogre Magi early and stuff like that. Overall, a fantastic build and one that continues to play dividends in the current meta. And for the final build of the week, we're talking about a variant of Spirits and Assassins. And guys, I know I just earlier in the first build talked about Spirits. But yes, they're that damn good now with this 3-star Storm Spirit. That with 6 Assassins, you got yourself a very interesting lineup. Now, almost no tanks, right? Yes, you got a tank here, but you're not really using him as a tank. You're using Earth Spirit as an activation for Spirits. Your primary tank, ironically, is going to be Nyx Assassin. Get him like a chainmail. Let him stun everybody with a Spike Carapace. You're going to run all out attack NO if you can. What happens is you stun here, you stun here. Next thing you know, you're Delta Slamming. People are, are disarmed, they're silenced, they can't do anything. And then they get uh, they get a slow attack rate. And then they get all this extra damage from the Storm Spirit. Here he comes again with his Ball Lightning. It is an absolutely phenomenal build. Not to mention you add Voids in there as well. And uh, this, this is the build, if anything, next week... I'm going into my my uh, my streams and stuff like that, looking to do this because with this new star uh, three star storm spirit, 
Like, this build is just so damn good. Again, there are some mandatory items on it. You want to get a Mask of Madness on a Slark. You want to get a high-value item for a Queen of Pain. Uh, the only disadvantage to this build is that you, all, you do have to level a little bit here because you are running Spirits. Uh, and you do want to get to your Faceless Void, which will activate all basically your Assassins and your Voids. TA fantastic as well with a uh, with a Deso because of her uh, her ability to do so much single target damage. I still recommend Ember Spirit has a Blink Dagger in this variant of the build. Forget about the Battle Fury, give him a Blink Dagger. The reason for that is because you want to activate those Delta Slams ASAP, and Ember Spirit tends to die rather quickly, so it's important that he gets those Delta Slams off. That's his primary focus there. Uh, so I still recommend a. Uh, a uh, blink dagger on him but anyways guys fantastic build we got two variants of spirits i'm so glad that they made a nice change here in storm spirit it really shifts up the meta a little bit here but anyways if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i'll be more than happy to answer them and thank you guys so much for watching and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers take care everyone and have yourselves a wonderful day